Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Senior Master Sergeant Brandy Powell, your narrator for today's ceremony. The presiding official for today's ceremony is Brigadier General Houston R. Cantwell, Home Center Commander. Welcome to the activation of Home Center for Officer Accessions and Citizen Development Detachment 1 ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and ruffles and flourishes and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem and the invocation. I invite you to pray in your tradition as I pray in mine. Gracious and loving God, we gather to celebrate as today is a big day. Today we take a moment to pause and reflect on what a significant occasion this is, a milestone, the first of many as Warrant Officer Training School is activated. Warrant Officer Training School did not come about with a snap of fingers, but rather with much creativity, tenacity, and dedication. And so I offer up Thanksgiving Thanksgiving for the people put in place to create this new avenue of honoring expertise. Thank you for the difficulties encountered that have encouraged creativity to find solutions. Thank you for the opportunity for success. Thank you for people with vision to create a way to continue developing our air and space forces. And thank you for partnerships. As you call people to serve in this new capacity, guide the Watts team. Give them wisdom, discernment, and grace. Bless each person that comes through this program, whether trainees, instructors, or cadre. And may each of us live each day with honor, dedication, and commitment. In your most holy name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Magnus, for the outstanding rendition of the National Anthem. And to Chaplain Kleinschmidt for your inspiring words and invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We're honored to have in attendance the following distinguished guests. Lieutenant General Andrea Tullis, Air University Commander and President. Major General Ann Gunter, Mobilization Assistant to General Tullis. Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Blazier, Air University Command Chief. And welcome to all commanders, chiefs, and first sergeants who have come to celebrate this special and historic occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Cantwell.
General Tullis, General Gunter, fellow commanders, chiefs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today on this seminal event. I am honored to lead today's proceedings where we will officially recognize the creation of the United States Air Force Warrant Officer Training School. Before we begin, I mean, we don't do this every day. I do want to give a special shout out to a couple folks that helped us make this a reality. We stand in this room and it just feels like the most professional environment that we can be in. So a special shout out to our protocol teams for making us represent our Air Force. <laughs> And then Chaplain Klein Schmidt, you always give us such inspirational words. And was that Sergeant Magnus? Is that right? Oh my goodness. Let's one more round of applause. That, that hit home. That hit home. Thank you for that. It's most fitting that the Air Force Warrant Officer story picks up here at Maxwell Air Force Base. Few installations have shaped airmen have shaped the Air Force as broadly as Maxwell has. Origins of flight training, Air Corps Tactical School, Air University, Officer Training School. Maxwell has served as a nexus of ideas, shaping airmen's culture since the early 20th century. Today, we continue the lineage of the Air Force Warrant Officer, and I find it altogether fitting and proper that we do it here at Maxwell. In 1947, when designated a separate service, the Air Force retained 1,200 warrant officers with roughly 4,000 authorizations. At the time, enlisted ranks only extended up to E7. Who knew? Honestly, I did not know that. Uh, warrant officers filled a void between the E7 enlisted and the O1 officer ranks. But in 1958, President Eisenhower signed the Military Pay Act that created the enlisted ranks of E8 and E9. There was a conundrum. Some felt overlap existed between the new super enlisted and the warrant officers. Although the other services identified a special, uh, separate and unique role for warrant officers, the Air Force changed course. And in 1959, the Air Force policy was changed. Warrant officer schoolhouse was closed and the phase out began. Active duty warrant officers continued to serve until 1980 and the reserves until 1992. And although warrant officers experienced a somewhat demure history in, other, in, in our history, those of the other services have certainly not. Army, Navy, Marine Corps warrant officers have contributed in truly remarkable ways. Serving in over 100 job specialties, today roughly 30,000 warrant officers provide unmatched technical expertise, experience, and leadership across the Department of Defense. And their positive impact is undeniable. They are the most technically competent and respected members of their units. They are in combat. Warrant officers are often given the toughest assignments. It's here that their expertise and leadership shines the brightest, with a select few earning the absolute highest military recognition, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Warrant officers represent some of the most competent American warfighters around. Given this context, I am excited for our future. Major Nate Raisler, Senior Master Sergeant Jarvis Wilson, lead a most talented team charged with building this new schoolhouse. Today we celebrate your accomplishments and all that have supported you. This effort has been a full court press across Maxwell Air Force Base. Air University staff, Officer Training School, Home Center Academic Affairs have contributed significantly in the creation of the Warrant Officer Training School. Special thanks to Lieutenant General Tullis for your clear guidance and intent throughout this landmark journey. And to the team of all the professionals, many who are assembled in this room that have informed this most important effort. The guidance from the top has been clear. At the most recent Air Force Association conference, Air Force Secretary Kendall stated, quote, we're gonna engage in developing a warrant officer program specifically for cyber and IT, to be able to ensure that we have the technical talent now and into the future. Air Force Chief of Staff General Alvin adds, 
We are in a competition for talent, and we understand that technical talent is going to be so critical to our success as an Air Force in the future. The warrant officer track allows airmen to pursue the technical path without having to choose between that and the leadership path. The Air Force Warrant Officer Training School is tasked with preparing highly skilled technical experts to take on the challenge of great power competition. Given this guidance and the role warrant officers have historically played, our team here at Maxwell has developed three pillars to their development. Building professional warfighters, building technical integrators, and building credible advisors. Building professional warfighters is no small task. Our warrant officers must demonstrate professionalism and decision-making across a continuum of warfare operations. As technical integrators, they must show an ability to lead and follow at proper times. They must also foster innovation while understanding how to integrate teams focused on mission success. Finally, our warrant officers will be credible advisors. They will demonstrate requisite communication skills informed by technical knowledge. They will understand the art of influence, ensuring the highest quality decisions come from their leadership teams. The importance of these warrant officers and their role in national security cannot be overstated. Cyber and information technology continue to play an outsized role in our national defense. Threats continue to increase. Cyber espionage, denial of service attacks, and infrastructure attacks are all on the rise. Read up on the cyber attack on the Office of Personal Management, or the ransomware attack called WannaCry, or Stuxnet. Once you read up on these, you'll, be, you'll sleep much better knowing the Air Force is doing all it can to defeat these threats. Today, the Air Force takes the deliberate step of activating the Warrant Officer Training School. This milestone ensures we are best postured to meet today's security challenges. Our Warrant Officer Training School is tasked with developing professional warfighters who bring exceptional technical expertise to an increasingly technical battle space. Historically, Warrant Officers have been tasked with the most challenging and important missions. I expect the same of our Air Force Warrant Officers. I'm confident in the training we're developing. I know it postures them for success. So proud to be part of this very talented team. Thank you all for sharing in today's event. Thank you. Thank you, General Cantwell. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Officer of Sessions and Citizen Development Detachment 1 activation. Attention to orders. Under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 38-101, Special Order Number G-24-19, the Gene E. Holm Center for Officer Accessions and Citizen Development Detachment 1 is activated at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, effective 28 June 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please stand and join us in the departure of the official party and the singing of the Air Force song.
Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, soon to be our thunder. Adam now, give the gun, give the gun! Now we dive, scouting our planes from under, off with one. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you.